Mark Fowler manages Yarrabin Farms, a family farming operation in Western Australia's central growing region. We farm at Williams, Wickerpin and Judinan. We're a mixed farming operation, 6,000 hectares of crop, 500 hectares for, for sheep. Um, we grow canola, barley, oats and export hay is a significant part of what we do. Ironstone gravels are a feature of the soils in the Williams area. It's a white gum gravel, reflective of the surrounding vegetation. We tend to have uh, ironstone gravel soils on the, the upper part of the landscape and uh, granite loams on the lower part of the landscape. The non-wetting characteristic of this ironstone gravel soil creates a lot of challenges. Firstly, you're sometimes confronted with uneven germination of seed or delayed germination of weeds, which makes that more difficult to manage, and uneven um, efficacy of herbicides, pre-emergent herbicides, um, and also loss of nutrients through erosion and denitrification. How do we handle that? Um, we do everything we can to optimise germination at, at, at seeding because that's just so critical with our significant dry seeding program. We use uh, in-furrow wetters in the form of SC14. We use high seeding rates, we seed deep, we use precision seeders um, and we use uh, edge row seeding where we can. All of these things enable us to, to seed early with confidence because it just affects the whole uh, season if you don't get a good germination at the start. This is only our first year with this seeder, so we've got a few seeding arms that are set up differently. We are trying a wider press wheel to reduce furrow collapse, which we did see a bit of this year. We're trying the paired rows, which we will probably roll out with our cereal program. We will probably stick with the, the single row for canola to optimise that uh, germination uh, potential with the, the SE14 being concentrated in a single 12 inch row. High nutrient fixing is another challenge which Mark counters with high rates of phosphorus compound fertiliser at seeding, concentrated in a 12-inch row. Then there's the root issues. There are a lot of different root challenges on this soil type. I guess the main one is, is the disease aspect. We obviously manage weeds over the summer to try to reduce that weed carryover. We have a rotation which is canola, barley and hay, so we're changing things up as much as we can. We've got high levels of aluminium in this soil, um, so we've got to be very careful about the, the toxic nature of that. We've used a lot of lime to try to keep the pHs up to reduce that risk. Mark says these management decisions have had a positive impact on production, particularly in the early establishment of crops. The yields that we've enjoyed in the last few years have been significantly better than the years before. And I will say that we farm in an area that gets an average annual calendar rainfall of 500 mils or a bit over each year. So there's clear potential for us. We, f we also farm in an area that has an average of 350 mils of rainfall and we're, we've seen the, the gains there. Um, so we're really seeking those sort of proportional gains for, for our high rainfall here. I mean, we really ought to be year in, year out getting six to seven tonne cereal yields and, and, and sort of two and a half to three and a half with canola. And that's, that's the challenge. To help bridge this gap and reach the potential of these paddocks, a significant GRDC investment is underway to provide growers with practical information on ironstone gravel soil. We certainly have plenty of aluminium here. Yeah, so we've kind of found similar things looking at the mineralogy of the gravels um, kind of through this area and all the way up to Jarrodale. Dr Fran Brailsford is part of a team at Murdoch University that spent the past two years investigating the gravel fraction of the soil which is often overlooked in common soil analysis. This phase one of research involved characterising gravel samples from across WA, South Australia and Victoria. Some of the key points that came out of phase one were that gravel is not the same all over. Different chemical compositions give the gravel really different properties when it comes to binding up nutrients in the soil or fertiliser, and also whether or not water is retained in the soil. So what we found is that really iron or aluminium rich gravels tend to hold on to a lot more fertiliser and they're also less porous, meaning that less water is retained within the soil. Whereas the opposite is true for silica dominated gravels. So addressing soils in a more targeted manner going forward is really important and that's what this phase two aims to address. Phase two of this research is taking the knowledge gained so far out of the lab and applying it to glasshouse and on-farm trials. I think that this phase of the project is really important because it puts the gravels back into the context of the soil profile and really starts to address some of those issues we have 
with gravels in conjunction with other soil constraints. So whether it's non-wetting or issues with how the roots grow through the gravel, we're really starting to address those problems as well. It would be good to kind of test the gravel as you go down through the different depths as well. Yeah. To me, success in this project would be actually providing some information that can help growers make on-farm change and to also uh, come up with some solutions that can be commercially available to growers so that they can pick from different options to help improve that particular issues. For Mark, it's a big step forward in the right direction to help growers like him make the most out of this high rainfall environment. The reason I think this research is so important is that gravel soils are very prevalent in the West Australian grain belt and they do tend to be in the areas of the highest rainfall so there's great opportunity to realise those gains from that extra rainfall and it's really pleasing to see uh, the, the recent focus on this soil type because there are real opportunities there I think. Mm -hmm.